So, uh, hello again. Um, so, I'm really sorry the video had no sound, but I will share uh, the link uh, and you can watch the video. It's uh, online on YouTube. So, we will now start the session number two, moderated by Ricardo Margado from uh, uh, ISCM Industries. So, um, Ricardo, welcome. And welcome also to all the speakers from uh, the panel. Ricardo, are you there? Yes. Hello, Carolina. Good morning. Morning. Morning, all. So, Ricardo, uh, the virtual screen is completely yours. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. Well, first of all, uh, good morning to all. Um, and good afternoon uh, to our colleagues from Japan. You are making an effort to be with us today uh, on time. Um, unfortunately, and due to this pandemic, we, hadn't, we have no opportunity to be together, so you are not enjoying our good sunny day here. Um, and uh, and uh, also, uh, I would like to thank uh, again Wevec uh, for this new uh, one more very important event, and also for the to, to invite uh, me and ISM to be to be present here. Um, well, uh, I will move into the introduction of the the topic of this panel, and uh, I need to thank uh, Joao Maciel and the speakers before because last question addressed and discussed was exactly related with uh, what we will discuss now in this very interesting uh, panel in which I'm proud to. Uh, to share. Um, well, uh, it's uh, we all discussed before about um, the uh, commercialization of the floating wind, the, the previous panel, namely, uh, but also the importance uh, of the uh, scalability, uh, meaning that we are talking now and we are on the global reality. Uh, I don't need to uh, highlight again all the goals that we have, and particularly Portugal and Japan. Uh, Portugal with an economy very that will very rely on on the green uh, or on the green economy, but Japan also as one of the top economies in the world, uh, they have also very ambitious plans. So, um, but this means also that we need to have the proper infrastructures and the proper strategy uh, to industrialize and to implement uh, all these marine renewable projects. Uh, not only floating wind, which is perhaps the most mature tech technology that we have now among the marine renewables, but also wave and tidal, uh, in which we will also get deeper in this panel, uh, learning more about some, some very interesting wave technologies that has been also uh, being tested in Portugal and in Japan. Um, so uh, it's, it's also... Uh, that's why the importance of this topic, because uh, it's uh, not only the, the, to have the, the scale and to have the projects, but also to have the due, uh, let's call it highways to run our cars, meaning the ports and the due infrastructures, uh, key sites, uh, many other uh, infrastructures, access channels, but also the smaller industry that should, should be involved uh, as well as R&D centers and universities to bring the uh, economy, scale economy, but also the industrialization of old marine renewables. Otherwise, we'll keep on words and not implementing the job. So, uh, in my opinion, there are many things to uh, work in this area. Uh, and so, uh, that's why, uh, and again, uh, the reinforcements of the interesting part of this panel. Uh, so, I will uh, start to introduce uh, the speakers, because I'm here not to speak, but also but only to moderate as much as I can this, this panel. Uh, so my uh, first speaker we have here to, today is uh, Mr. Heishi Kobayashi. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry. Um, is, uh, is the developing uh, development coordinator of Nagasaki Marine Industry Cluster Promotion Association. Uh, is Doctor of Engineering, Naval and Marine Engineering uh, at the Osaka University, uh, Professor Emeritus at the Kobe University, specialized in ship uh, maneuverability, worked at Kobe University from 2002 after working at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries uh, Research Institute and Mitsubishi uh, and Industries USA as well, 
And after that, as a member of this association that he represents now, is engaged in overseas project invitation and demonstration field works. Um, so, um, as I told you, he's the developing coordinator of Nagasaki Marine Industry Cluster Promotion Association uh, from Asian Marine Energy Center in Nagasaki. So, Mr. Eishi, uh, stage is yours, uh, please. Oh, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to check the presentation here. Probably you can see my slides. Let me check. Okay. Uh, probably you can see the on my presentation. Um, Ricardo, Ricardo, -san, um, thank you very much um, for your very kind introduction. And um, also, uh, thank you very much for giving me uh, such kind of very good opportunity to make this uh, presentation here. Also, um, thank you very much for holding this kind of very important, very impressive um, uh, conference. And uh, again, my name is Eich Kobayashi uh, from uh, Nagasaki. And uh, I am um, now uh, currently, I am a business creative coordinator in the uh, NPO to proceed the test of field business and um, to manage the um, Nagasaki Offshore Academy and to support the um, local business uh, relating offshore energy applications. And um, first of all, I would like to explain about the um, NAMICA. Um, this is the Nagasaki Marine Industry uh, Class Two Promotion Association organization. Uh, was established on 19th March 2014, and the organization became not-for-profit organization on 10th October um, 2004. And the NPO is supported by um, 90, 95 companies such as uh, marine construction and machinery manufacturing, uh, shipbuilding, uh, electrical facility, manufacturing and diving, design support, information technology and the business solution, environmental research and the ship and, ship and um, uh, custom clearance, mainly located in Nagasaki Prefecture. Uh, in the Next slide, yes. Uh, I got to introduce the um, some activity of my NPO. Um, we carried out the um, regional industry for China program called collaboration with the JETRO um, Japan External Trade Organization from 2015 to uh, 18. Uh, from 2014 to 15, the industrial employment creation strategical, strategical uh, project supported by the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare was conducted. And uh, more, um, for example, for from fiscal year 2016 to present the several kinds of activities, so-called the CN Japan project supported by the Nippon Foundation was carried out. And the, uh, from fiscal year 2016 to present tidal turbine actual development promotion project supported by the uh, Ministry of the Environment, uh, so-called MOE was conducted. Probably uh, later, uh, Miyazaki-san will explain um, the context of the detail. In the, um, from nine, 2019 to present on uh, measurement and uh, analysis of tidal current and offshore wind turbine maintenance related projects supported by Nagasaki Prefecture. And more, um, the, 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 the uh, Ocean Human Resource Development Project supported by the Nippon Foundation is in progress from uh, 2019. I want to explain later. And uh, this show the um, Nagasaki Prefecture. Um, 
Nagasaki, the prefecture with a very huge sea area, which is at the forefront of Japan as a marine nation. And the coastline length of the prefecture is 4,200 kilometers. And it is the second largest among Japanese 47 prefectures. In the okay, next slide. So the Japanese government uh, designated three sea areas in the Nagasaki prefecture is official demonstration area. Um, these area provide uh, preferable tidal current and wind velocity for tidal turbines and wind turbines. And uh, I'd like to focus the uh, Nagasaki prefectural government has already uh, secured the um, consent of local fishermen to the uh, use of the DC area as demonstration fields through uh, so many series of negotiations. The prefect pre prefectural government also supports the um, companies to utilize the um, some renewable energy projects. And you can see the map around the Nagasaki area. The first one, this one, first one in the, um, for tidal power test in Godo City, in the uh, maximum current velocity is three meters per second. The second one is for the moderate tidal power test in um, Enoshima and Hiroshima in Saika City Sea area. And the, uh, the third one is for, for offshore wind turbine in Kabashima area, in the Agoto city area. The average wind velocity is over seven meters per second. And you can see the picture of tidal power turbine here uh, of the MOE project install, installed in the uh, Hiroshima area, Hiroshima island area. And um, more this area, um, you can see the two megawatt, two megawatt on spot type flowing wind turbine in Goto. And the, this area, um, the, 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 the um, selected for 16 megawatt size of shore wind turbine farm um, that consists of eight sport type floating offshore wind turbine. And you can see the MIA Marine Environmental Tidal Integrated Acquisition System. And the, uh, we carried out several kinds of experiments for uh, MIA. This is the um, abbreviation of the, um, the such kind of instrument. And the test was carried out around the Kabashima area. Spa type floating body is introduced. The uh, height of it is about 26 meters and the uh, diameter of lower part and the upper part is are two, two meters and one meters um, respectively. The draft is 4.5 meters. The mass of the uh, MMA is about uh, four, four, 46 tons. This MIA mirror is moored by chain and fiber rope combination three lines. In the, okay, let me check. Uh, Doppler lighter, um, so called Dia Bretza, is also e equipped on the measurement unit located at the top of the mirror. The unit is considering of field cell, solar um, panel and the lithium ion battery and with velocity measurement um, devices. And uh, you can see the um, outline of the tidal turbine demonstration project supported by MOE. The um, CMEC Atlantis AR500 tidal turbines 
was installed on the seabed in the on our set test site in the Godot Islands chain under a contract with the local company QMI Energy KME on January 23rd, uh, 2021. In the on demonstration project of the Ministry of Environment of Japan, the turbine is clocked its first uh, 10 megawatt hour of generation within the uh, first 10 days successfully. And it is also reported that the uh, commemorative energy is about uh, 80 megawatt hour as of the um, end of this April. And this shows the, um, the turbine on the barge at the installation point. And I'm going to explain about the um, Nagasaki Ocean Academy. This project is um, in the cooperation with DOB in Delft, Netherlands. And these are several lessons such as offshore wind interaction project development, certification, insurance, and uh, finance offshore installation, EPC project management, and so, and on-site practical training. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the lessons are currently carried out only online style and no pra practical training has been conducted due to the uh, effect of COVID-19. And uh, we are also uh, planning to start other lessons as operation and maintenance course and or uh, development of floating type uh, turbine course. And we are also preparing more regions for sea experiment around the uh, island, Koyagi area and the uh, Iojima area and Takashima area here. And these areas are easy accessible from the Nagasaki city center area. Um, Goto Island is uh, a bit far from the Nagasaki um, central position, but uh, these areas are very easy to access. Moreover, technical cooperation are available from uh, Nagasaki University and or Nagasaki Institute of Applied Science, Nagasaki Marine Industry Cluster Promotion Association, um, and local fishery boats uh, and the local shipping companies and local coastal uh, construction and more and more. And moreover, um, several kinds of um, equipment are ready for rent, such as a uh, Doppler lighter here, and uh, for measurement of wind condition, and ADCP uh, with measurement sea bottom install type, and ROV for, for, for just example, underwater, explosion or uh, taking pictures or um, tracing the uh, seabed or something. And uh, data system for, and the telecommunication system for data uh, treatment. And, uh, and the solar panels and the fuel cells in the uh, receive ion batteries uh, are ready for rent for the isolated power supply. And uh, um, anyway, MIPA NAMIC um, develops and maintains various kinds of business for the formation of construction of AMIC. Thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Kobayashi for your uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, it's, uh, it has been clear, I think for all that the characterization of several sites and tests uh, of and testing of different solutions is, is ongoing in Japan with the new tools and equipment available uh, to further investigate the sites. And I found also very interesting your slide where you explain uh, your plans uh, how to train and prepare people 
not only on the point of view of installation, but also the OEM. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges that all the industry and our industry also will have in the future is to have the available and the right skilled people uh, to perform the jobs, uh, to run the projects. Uh, so very interesting. And again, thank you very much for your um, uh, presentation and to share your, your thoughts and ideas with us. Thank you. Um, so now I will move. Uh, we, we understood the potentialities and, uh, and what Japan is preparing uh, to the future. Now we'll move uh, for a more um, developer view. Uh, I have the pleasure to, to, to have here with us Mr. Kota Miyagawa. Um, he's representing the Kyudan Mirai Energy. Uh, he's the chief of the business development department uh, of Kyudan Mirai Energy uh, Incorporation, uh, Japan's first large scale tidal power project. Uh, Mr. Miyagawa has been working for Kyudan Mirai Energy. Uh, which is a renewable energy developer and power producer in Japan. And he's currently in charge of the business development of the ocean uh, renewable energy and engaged in uh, Japan's first uh, 0.5 megawatt scale tidal power demonstration project, which was funded by the Ministry of the Environmental since 2019. Uh, Mr. Miyagawa, uh, the stage is yours. Uh, please. Look forward to see your presentation and to hear from you. Uh, thank you for introduction. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about Japan's first large-scale tidal power project. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself and my company. Uh, my name is Kota Miyagawa, and I work in a company called Kyuden Mirai Energy. Kyuden Mirai Energy is a power developer and a power producer specializing in renewable energy. So far, we have involved in 1,038 megawatt development and we are known as one of the leading developers in Japan. We are also unique in that we have five kinds of assets in our portfolio, namely solar, wind, biomass, geothermal, and hydropower. In recent years, we have been focusing on the marine renewable energy and we are working on tidal power demonstration project. Today, I'd like to uh, introduce this project. This slide shows the principle of tidal power generation. Tidal power generation uses the kinetic energy of tidal current and the flow of seawater is caused by gravitational force. As we know, the moon's revolution causes the spring tides and nip tides. In addition, the Earth's rotation also causes flood tides and ebb tides. In other words, tidal power generates electricity in repeating the ebb tides and flood tides four times a day and the spring tides and deep tides in 27 day cycle. This slide, show, this slide shows general features of tidal power. The first feature is high predictability. As I explained, the tides are caused by the motion of moon and earth, and it has periodicity. So we can accurately predict the amount of power generation. For example, if we want to know amount on any given day, we can predict it whether it is today or 10 years after from today. The second feature is high weather disaster resilience. As tidal generator is submerged in seawater, it is hardly affected by strong winds and high waves. In particular, Japan experiences many typhoons and in recent years, they have become larger and strong, stronger due to climate change. But even those severe typhoons don't cause any problems in generation. The third feature is low environmental impact. 
naturally, there is no auditory or visual impact. This feature is very much appreciated by local people in the area turbine is installed. I have explained some features and I think you will find that it has unique features that differ from conventional renewable energies. This slide shows a project overview. Project name is as you can see, and this project is funded by Ministry of Environment. The total budget for this project is 1.8 billion Japanese yen, and it is equal to 14 million euro. We procured generator system from Simec Atlantis Energy, a British manufacturer, and the specifications are shown in the table. In UK, 1.5 megawatt generator has already been commercialized, but as a purpose of this demonstration is to verify the basic technology, we specified a slightly smaller generator than that one in UK. Next, uh, I'd like to explain the installation procedure. The generation system consists of five parts one tidal turbine generator, one turbine support structure, and three ballast blocks. The order of installation is first the TSS is placed on the seabed, then three ballast blocks are placed on the TSS racks. Finally, the TTG is inserted into the TSS tab. There is no mechanical work and they are installed on the seabed only by their own weight. This slide shows uh, uh, offshore construction work uh, carried out in this year. In addition to turbine installation, we also read about two kilometers subsea cable, but it took only six days. To, for, uh, for the offshore work, the Norwegian flag vessel with DPS was chartered. Uh, such a large DPS vessel doesn't exist in Japan, so we have brand the advanced foreign technology and infrastructure. Now, uh, let me explain the results of demonstration tests. First is high weather disaster resilience. The two figures in this slide show the measured power output during a typhoon or a strong low pressure. In the figure above, the wind speed was over 20 meter, and in the figure below, the maximum wave height was 3.8 meter. However, even under such severe conditions, the tidal power generation system has been able to continue the power generation stably. This data proves that tidal power has high weather disaster resilience. Next is, uh, next is predictability. This slide shows a figure that compare, compares major power output and the predicted power output. As you can see, the torrents are consistent with each other and the discrepancy was less than 1%. This proves that tidal power has high predictability. Next, as for the environmental impact, we have been monitoring the generator since we started the demonstration test. Looking at the pictures, uh, we can see that uh, the amount of marine life on TTG increases, the amount of fish also increases. Increases. It is proved that the tidal power has low impact on the sea life. As, uh, as I have explained so far, we have obtained good results and I believe this phase one project was successful. However, there are still issues that need to be resolved before commercialization. As the purpose of phase one was to verify the basic technology and reliability, the TTG was designed with limited functions, 
namely, it is not equipped with your control and pitch control, and it is not connected to the power grid. In the next phase, we need to verify that these remain technological issues. In the first project, we are going to modify the turbine and verify its performance. Specifically, the output will be increased to 1.1 megawatt and your control and pitch control will be added. Of course, the system will be connected to the power grid. Furthermore, we are going to build a business model for commercialization. This project is expected to start in 2022 and will last until 2025. Eventually, we are aiming at achieving the commercialization in phase three. This would be around 2025. Finally, let me summarize today's presentation. We want to be a raising company in Japan in the field of marine renewable energy. So we are now developing tidal power generation. What is interesting about tidal power generation is that it has features such as high predictability and high weather disaster resilience. We are going to promote tidal power generation by taking advantage, advantages of these features. As both Japan and Portugal are blessed with marine resources, I'm happy if we could build a cooperative relationship in this field. The door of Qdemira Energy is always open, so please feel free to contact us. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Miyagao, for your very interesting presentation and to share with us some of your results, some of your uh, uh, learning uh, experience, uh, which is key to keep moving towards the maturity and industrialization of the uh, marine renewables and particularly this, uh, this uh, your project and this kind of, of, of projects, in, in this case, the tidal projects. Um, well, it's time now to move for other uh, technology, uh, wave technology, uh, which is being uh, developed and implemented in, in Portugal um, by Core Power. So I have the pleasure to introduce uh, to all of you Miguel Silva. Uh, Miguel is the general manager of uh, Core Power uh, in Portugal, uh, and he will speak today about the Core Power's Ocean's flagship High Wave 5 uh, project in Portugal. Uh, Miguel has, has a long experience from technical and management level of industrial operations with emerging technologies, uh, more than uh, 10 years dedicated to the wind energy sector. He was responsible for the startup and optimization of assembly operations in onshore and offshore wind turbine plants in, in Germany, but also in Portugal and in India. Uh, in his previous role as plant manager of large wind blade factory, he had uh, composite manufacturing operations within uh, with the six, 600 people. Uh, Miguel, it's great to have you here. So please go ahead and, and, and thank you to, to be here to share with us your, uh, your project. So uh, <laughs> good morning to everybody. Hopefully you are seeing my screen uh, right now. Um, I would like to thank uh, Wayback for the, uh, this invitation and uh, giving us the, the chance again to promote Wave Energy and to give the feedback of our project uh, in what regards to the status of the development of our flagship uh, technology. So uh, I take the chance also to speak a little bit about the company from where we come and where we are uh, right now. And most important for us is that we are uh, working in a way to complement existing renewable energy uh, technologies, mainly uh, marine, so we can uh, go up to a system where we can uh, give to the grid 100% uh, renewable energy um, and feed the grid with that kind of energy. So, 
Corpower Ocean is a Swedish company. Uh, we develop uh, and manufacture our own equipment, and we. Yeah, to... do, do interrupt you. Can you perhaps place your presentation full screen because we are seeing the two oh. screen right now. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, so you are seeing the, the wrong screen, I would say. Right. Yes. So, yes. You need I, perhaps to put in the full screen. Yeah, I got it. I got it into, into full screen, but not the right, the, the right way. I get. Yeah. So I maybe like this or. Yeah. Now it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yes. So. <clears throat> so as I was saying before. We are a Swedish company with offices in Sweden, of course, Norway, Scotland, and getting bigger here in Portugal, where we established uh, our base for the composite development program that I will speak in a couple of minutes, but also as a base for our all our marine operations uh, that we will also take a look in the, in the next slides. So we have uh, big companies engaging with, with us, mainly also EDP, renewable energy, and uh, more specifically, NL Green green also uh, and we have secured more than 60 million euros in funding plus uh, of course uh, some private investors uh, also coming to us so our team is uh, our let's say management team is our Patrick Wall is our CEO and enthusiast of wave energy for many years and I represent the Portuguese operations here but mainly it's important to say that we are now more than 60 people, very close to 70. This is the largest team dedicated to wave energy research and, and development. We have persons for, from 14 different nationalities, all, all of them engage in the effort of bringing into the market a winnable solution and a bankable solution to take uh, advantage of the huge amount of power that the ocean has to give us. And this is the key point. We have run about 10% uh, of the global electricity demand uh, as one of the biggest uh, objectives that is for us to supply that amount of electricity coming from wave. Taking that from wave and taking that from the oceans is something that we need to tap in, uh, in a way that the power is there and we can use it to balance our systems. So as you can see here, marked uh, blue, uh, we have the, let's say, the golden places for wave energy. And you can see here the coast from Europe, the Pacific, the Pacific, South Africa, India, Japan, Australia. So all of these sites represent uh, optimum locations and the islands, of course, in the Atlantic, optimal locations for deployment of uh, wave energy. Again, our target is to give to the grid uh, power that's generated by 100% uh, renewable sources. And why wave energy, can, how wave energy can contribute to this? Wave energy complements the intermittent profiles of the two main renewable sources that we are using right now. We know that hydropower will soon lose its uh, key position because the dams will be more of a water storage because water is becoming scarce, uh, will be more of a water storage uh, and utility than actually to generate power. You'll we'll see that in the future. So we just take a look at uh, solar and, and wind in a way that uh, wave energy can actually complement the profiles and levelize it up to a point. You see here is the data collected from the coast of California and uh, across a week from October 20 to October 27. You see in yellow the solar uh, energy production profile. You see night, day, night, day, this intermittency. And of course, you see wind uh, below us, this irregular profile and somehow unpredictable uh, profile up to a certain level. The line that you see draw there is the simulation of the wave energy with, uh, with, with regards to real data coming from buoys uh, outside uh, the Pacific coast of the US, in California and all time. So as you can see here, wave energy will contribute to a levelized system and will fill in the gaps 
uh, for, from coming from wind and, and solar. Uh, wave energy will never compete for the resource locally because the local wind has nothing to do with the wind that has been generating the waves by kinetic uh, transfer, transfer of kinetic energy. Um, and that happens in weather systems that some, sometimes will be in the coast of Canada, Atlantic coast of Canada and Atlantic coast from the US. And that weather system generates the waves that are transmitted across the Atlantic Ocean up to the shores in Portugal and, and this part of Europe with virtually no loss because uh, uh, the water is so dense that we, we don't do the energy that was uh, transferred from the wind to the surface of the ocean. At our shores, a wave will be uh, loaded, let's say like this, with 34 to 40 uh, kilowatts per meter. So there's a huge amount of power on each wave that arrives to our shores here in, in Europe. So the idea is to um, add wave to the mix in a way that we uh, get a 100% decarbonized electricity system. Uh, we'll have um, less investment on the actual uh, electrical system and also less storage, less generation and less grid capacity. Because looking at the ocean, we have the actual ocean is a storage unit. It's a huge battery. It's loaded with power all the time with high degree of predictability. So we know which, which waves are coming and what, what profile those waves have. So we need to take advantage from this power source and tap it, tap it in a way that we can do it in the large numbers. So the main challenges in wave energy at being there forever. So we have to first survive the, the, the ocean uh, and the harsh conditions. And of course, we have to maximize uh, a heavy to cost. And we have uh, found a solution for these two problems. And this is done through uh, minimizing peak load. And we'll see uh, in a moment what we mean with that. And also, of course, maximize average out annual load what, how do we do it? We do it offering the market a new uh, generation of wave energy converters. What you are seeing there in the picture is our device at half scale. It's only uh, four meters in diameter that was deployed and it was uh, tested in Hockney uh, in the last years. And which, uh, from which the results are very positive, allowing us to go into the next stage that we are right now and manufacture uh, this year one device at full scale. In the next years, we'll manufacture three more devices and a collection hub for the, the power. And uh, using these four devices, we'll go over one, two megawatts and we'll have a test for a, the first wave farm uh, here, here in Portugal with our own devices. So here you see one of, our, one of the solutions that we have found, this is a, what we call transparent mode. Uh, this is the device uh, in Scotland that sits <coughs> transparent to the incident waves as the blades in the wind turbine will pitch whenever the, the velocity of the wind is too high for them to take. So uh, as you can see, the device stands still, is not reacting to the waves and uh, it's actually surviving uh, eight meter uh, waves that you can see here. This device is ready to survive, to keep operating up to 14 meters waves. And whenever we find that the uh, conditions are not optimum for, for it to continue to work, it will go into transparent mode and will be self preserving and not reacting to, to the waves. This is one of our solutions. The second solution is what we call the the wave springs that allow us to tune the, uh, the device to, to the waves. So this actually can uh, maximize the wave that's one meter up to three meters. So allowing us to have this, let's say, a linear profile of production uh, along, the, along the day and, and along the weeks. So these two uh, things combined, the, um, possibility of having it in safe mode to allow us to survive and minimize 
peak loads plus the wet stream system that allows us to uh, keep um, keep a constant production regardless of the not so easy it's easy to say regardless of the wave wavelength and height so these two features combined will help us to uh, win the, the challenge that uh, wave energy has to, to overcome so it becomes commercially uh, viable and technically viable of course looking at our device you can see it's um, we can produce uh, four five times more energy per ton so um, and this amounts to less than 300 tons per megawatt so this is even more competitive than actual actual floating wave we're talking about a device that will never go over 70 tons 70 tons when compared with the existing technology it's a huge leap in, uh, in, in this regards also so uh, what we offer we offer survivability efficiency as you can see four five times more power out out of each time of material of course low capital and operations cost because there will be no need for huge caches to install the device the device will be towed along the simple multi cap for example and installed with a quick connect so no need for for huge investment either in installation but also in daily uh, maintenance and of course uh, we uh, try to uh, contribute to the 100% system as we said and also with that function for green balancing taking a look at the intermittency of this profile that we have seen in the first slide so regarding our project we are getting into the end of 2021 uh, we are getting ready to deploy the first full-scale uh, device and this is happening now in the first quarter of uh, 2022 despite we start uh, in the two upcoming weeks with our marine operations get by getting the, the site ready to receive the full scale wave. So we, we had this very methodic and very slow and very um, careful methodology that is going um, from stage to stage, validating each result after one after the other. So we get to a point where the the full scale is uh, the result of uh, several iterations. So what we plan to do in Portugal is happening right now. So, and what's happening right now, I'm talking to you from these offices here. We are installed in the commercial harbor in Vila do Castelo. And uh, here on this area, you don't see it, but it's there. It's, it's our manufacturing and research and development building from where we uh, conduct all operations uh, for, from marine and also from the composite development program. So what do we plan to do? Uh, we plan to install a new uh, submarine cable in the, in the two upcoming weeks. So before the 2021 is over, we'll have this cable installed together with the anchor for the device that you see here, the C4, generation four, a full scale device. In the next year, we'll install the electrical collection hub that you see here and three more devices, what we call the C5, the generation C5. All together, will allow us to have 1.2 megawatts connected by a subsea cable to the substation. So we'll have our project starting uh, early next year connected to the grid through uh, the substation here in Agusador. This is the same site uh, that Windfloat uh, Atlantic used to test uh, their, their, um, their solutions. So we hope to take the same steps from uh, demonstration to uh, pre-commercial to full uh, commercial. Here you can see some pictures from the actual device being assembled in uh, Sweden. Um, the one-to-one -one scale. Here's another picture from the device, the pre-tension cylinder. And one of the most important features that we have in Sweden, that's the dry test facility. So we have uh, the, the biggest uh, over seven megawatt capacity dry test facility where the device that you can see that fully assembled with some mock parts, of course, these structures are the mock hull, being uh, tested through a simulation of several sea states, several wave conditions, several errors, whatever you can think of. That's what we call the Ironman test, 
it's been tested now for more than 10 weeks and uh, we are collecting the data and the learnings um, to be sure up to the point we can of course when we deploy the, the, the device in the ocean what will happen will be something really really unexpected okay so in portugal what we have been doing we have been uh, developing something new also because up to now still has been the main choice for the hull or the floating uh, solutions for many other uh, devices we have been developing something really special that is a, a composite a composite hull and a composite shell for for the device uh, this is our temporary building here in the beautiful city of uh, Vienna Costello where through filament winding uh, technology, we developed the, the solution for the hull of, uh, of our device. This has a, a clear impact on LCOE, uh, in, uh, in CAPEX, uh, and uh, many other things, including the fact that we, we actually have a mobile manufacturing facility and will, uh, will allow us to take the manufacturing of these parts up to the local where the project is being developed. So, uh, as I uh, talked to you before, the half scale has four meters of diameter. The full scale boy will have more than nine meters of diameter. It will be uh, close to a sphere. It's not really a sphere, but it will be close to a sphere with nine meters of diameter. So, for that, we have developed a very special technology for the mandrel and also a mobile machine and mobile facility that will allow us to do the uh, hull, the, the, the buoy, exactly in the same spot of the project. So this uh, will cut down on many costs, uh, many on logistics, and of course it, it, with all these benefits in, in production. So this is the act, one actual picture from one of the tests. This is uh, filament wiring, for, for, and this is the dry test to test the, the pads and to test the, the bandwidth and so on. This is the actual picture from the inside of that building here in the Internet Castello. Yeah, coming up now, in the six, starting the 6th of December, we'll do what I've described before. You can see here's a picture also from the building, from the inside. This is a subsea cable ready to be installed. Um, also, the our uh, novel anchor system. It's not this one, this is a typical pillar. So we have developed a very special anchor that was tested in Hanover and uh, in many different places. It's proven uh, um, to be something really new, something really interesting. And we actually received uh, the Vibro Hammer today, the world's largest Vibro, Vibro Hammer developed by Niseko just to uh, pile our anchor into the bottom of the ocean in Agusado. So this will happen uh, starting 6th of December. We install the new cable, we install the R anchor, we install the navigation buoys, weight measuring buoys, all the other, all the other stuff that's need to be to be uh, installed when you are doing a, a project like this. Yeah, so what the product that we are uh, selling is actually uh, clusters from 5 to 30 megawatts, as you can see here. And this is a, a simulation how it would look when we hybridize both uh, technology together in the, same, in the same spot. So the visual impact is very low uh, and we actually need one third of the area that the wind turbine makes to get the same power out. So here's a, a, a drawing of a, top, a typical topology where you have our collection hub here in the middle um, and you have the strings of uh, uh, boys just side to it and of course the collection hub will be on the main export cable. So this is the product that you will sell. Uh, not we can sell one single device, two single device that's also that's also workable, for example, for fisheries, for desalinization, um, and uh, for small islands and small niche, small niches. But the actual big product is what we sell here, five to thirty megawatt clusters. So there is not the intent to make the devices much bigger. I would say that they, they are now rated at 300 kilowatts. They can go up to 400, 450, but then it becomes um, non-logical. Non so 
uh, will not expect to get even to a half of a megawatt or one megawatt in one device. So the, the bet is always to have clusters with small devices that we that are actually uh, win the challenge in the ocean. So our business model is uh, what you could expect. So we manufacture our own equipment, supply the engineering services to uh, utilities and project development. Yeah, so in Viana uh, Castello, we, we have this uh, idea and it's uh, getting stronger with time. We have an offshore cable already and we have the chance to advertise our uh, devices with a wind float existing turbines. And for that, we have a project ongoing called Use Cores, where we'll share the data uh, that's generated by our project at the Gustadora, which is a couple of kilometers down to the south, and share it. And get it together with the wind float uh, data and see how much this aggregation will uh, add into the add, add value into the um, power that it's uh, supplied to the grid. So we have space in Vienna. We will have a floating uh, collection hub also as a part of that project coming in, and we are ready to deploy at least 10 megawatts of our devices there. So this would be what uh, right now is happening with the uh, wind flow there. They have uh, test demonstrated the technology, proven that technically and commercially it makes sense. Now we, need to do, we go to this pre-commercial where we deploy at least 10 megawatts uh, of uh, wave power to prove that's also bankable and that we can go for the next stage of this mass production and uh, um, getting into the market with, with our product. Yeah, and that's it. I think you know this slide. We have a lot, and uh, this ocean, the ocean energy is a huge opportunity for jobs, for supply chain, to um, to also to have this impact on uh, the economy and people's life. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you, Miguel. Very interesting presentation, and uh, to understand also the course and the way that core power has been doing over the last years and betting strongly as you explained on the wave energy it's great to, to know also that we might have a hot december in portuguese waters for wave which is yes. a good very good news that we received today we are running against time um, now it's time to pass uh, the stage to uh, matthias Schigel. Uh, matthias i'm sorry but i will put you a bit pressure on time um the we are we are running uh, against uh just to introduce matthias matthias is here to speak with us about uh, echo wave power project with the apdl and matthias is, is leading the business development activities on the echo power for different markets his job includes the work in project creation partnerships management and sales in the in the implementation of the new wave energy projects um, uh, Matias established uh, the Portuguese activities, the, the company activities in the, in Dutchland, in, Portu in Portugal, in Spain, in Italy, but also in Australia, um, and has been uh, instrumental uh, in launching new projects with collaboration of ports, investors, uh, and corporates. Matias also participated on behalf of EcoWave Power in the accelerator programs in the Netherlands, Australia, Spain, Portugal, and UK building a very strong network in those markets. Recently, he was also re representing EWP in COP26 in Glasgow. Matthias, go ahead and please try to, to be as much efficient as possible. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ricardo. Don't worry, I can be really efficient. You are seeing my screen? Yes, we are. Thank you. So the world needs to move away from fossil fuels, not only to combat climate change, but to supply affordable energy. I'm Matias Sigal from EcoWave Power, and I would like to tell you about an overlooked source of green energy, wave energy. EcoWave Power developed an innovative technology to harvest the power from the ocean and sea waves. As we all just discussed, we need to move away from fossil fuels. Most of the energy we consume today is creating CO2 that is part of the causes of climate change. And renewable energy is part of the solution. Wave energy can have a lot of advantages. Most of the people in the world is living close to the coastline, so we can reduce the transmission cost if we create the energy next to the users. Wave energy 
can be stable being able to produce energy 24 7 in suitable locations and waves contain much more kinetic energy than wind which means that with smaller devices we can create the same amount of electricity that is also abundant it's estimated by the world energy council that wave energy could supply twice the amount of electricity that the world produced today and in europe it's estimated that wave energy could supply up to 10 percent of the region's energy need. However, most of the companies in the past, this is a picture, for example, of a company called Pelamis, they went to the offshore. And because of the issues and the challenges of the offshore, they face lower liability, high prices because of high capex and opex. And because of this lower liability due to the extreme conditions in these locations and the high capex, it was difficult to ensure these systems. And also, they were not completely friendly for the marine life. That's why when we develop our solution, we brought the technology to the shore. So here's a picture of the project we have in Gibraltar. As you can see in the picture, we attach floaters to existing man-made infrastructures like piers, shetties, and breakwaters. We have all the equipment located on land, and this makes it much easier to operate and to install. So it works like this. We attach the floaters into existing marine infrastructures. The floaters move up and down with the motion of the waves, making a piston to compress an hydraulic fluid. The fluid goes into an accumulator located on land, creating pressure that turns an hydraulic motor and turns a generator, providing clean electricity. Here, as you can see in this illustration, only the floaters are in contact with the water, and all the rest is on land inside a standard 20-foot shipping container. Here you can see a picture of, again, our project in Gibraltar that clearly explains our vision. So we can operate the system from land. The OPEX is much easier and lower, and we can connect to the grid directly from the container, also making it as simple as a regular power station. For this reason, we're able to be reliable. First of all, we have most of the system located on land. And as you can see in the lower video, during a storm, the floaters can lift from the water level and protect from that storm. Because of this, it's a fully insurable technology. Our two power stations that we are operating currently are insured by, by different insurance companies. It's cost efficient and 100% environmentally friendly. So the first project we built in real condition was in the year 2014 in Israel. So this project was a pilot project as an also an R&D facility where we put the technology in real condition. And now we are expanding it, as you can see in the Eco Power EDF-1 to a 100 grid connected kilowatts project. So this project is being done under a joint venture with the French electrical company EDF. And also we work with Siemens who provides part of the electrical equipment. The other project we have is in Gibraltar. So in Gibraltar, we're operating since 2016, the only wave power station in the world connected to the grid under a PPA, a power purchase agreement. This power station got support from the European Regional Development Fund. And in Portugal, we signed in 2020 a concession agreement with the port of Le Chois, APDL. This concession agreement is for up to 20 megawatts project. However, we are starting with phase one that will be a one megawatt project in APDL. You can see an illustration in the fourth image. And we already got the permits to, to develop this project. We already have the concession agreement to develop this project. And now we are ongoing on the next steps in the development phases. Apart from that, we have a pro global project pipeline of more than 325 megawatts including projects in different countries and regions around the world, as you can see here. In Europe, of course, we are including the 20 megawatts in Portugal and, and also some other projects in other countries. But I'm glad here to see a lot of people from Portugal and from Japan. The wave energy potential in Portugal is immense. Here you can see a wave map to, from Metocean view, and you can see the wave climate in the region. Also, there are some uh, targets from the government to reach net zero by 2050. In Japan, we have a similar situation. Of course, we have more meters of coastline because of 
it's an island, but the way climate is as high as in Portugal in some locations and the targets are similar. So there are two amazing markets to explore cooperation for the development of wave energy projects. So here, what I'm opening to you is an opportunity to make a step for a more sustainable future. We are looking to discuss with different site owners, strategic partners and investors, for example, ports and coastal cities as a site owner or energy companies and renewable energy project developers in order to be able to progress with the existing projects as I mentioned and additional projects and project investors. Before we finalize, I want to touch this topic that we believe that for an energy transition, we need the different energy sources. It won't be only waves, solar or wind, it's a combination of all of them. Um, as an example, we, as you can see here in, in the small image, we patented a, a solution to combine a hybrid system of solar and wave using the existing floaters to put solar panels and avoiding the need of square meters on land for the deployment of these panels. So here, um, I'm opening to you this opportunity to make a step for a more sustainable future. I'm really looking forward to discuss with anyone in the audience about the development of wave energy projects to help to reach an energy transition. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matias. It was a very uh, lean presentation, very interest. Uh, we also learned that other things besides also the project from Core Power is happening also in Portugal. And I think we have much things now to share and to learn and to create together with our Japanese colleagues. Thank you again, Matias. Uh, we, uh, we are really running against time. I have only 10 minutes available uh, to uh, run the q and uh, and I apologize for that, my fault. I was needed to be more lean also to organize the time. Um, well, uh, let's start for the, for the questions. Perhaps I have here one first question that I note also that Mr. Miyagawa wants to, uh, to answer it. Uh, the question is from uh, Juan Zapata, uh, and the question is, uh, has been enough the testing time in full-scale tidal turbines installed in Japan to map possible damage due to corrosion, fatigue, and seals failure inside the nacelle of the tidal turbine? Mr. Miyagawa, uh, perhaps you can answer it. Uh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we have not been able to check for the corrosion or seals uh, inside the nacelle. Uh, as the operation period of this demonstration test is about only 11 months. However, the turbines have already been commercialized in the UK. Uh, if we carry out periodic maintenance, I think there is no technical issue in turbine generator itself. I hear that uh, the interval of periodic maintenance is about Per uh, six years, we have we have to redrive the turbine generator for onshore maintenance. Uh, the main objective of this demonstration was to establish the uh, installation of technology. Uh, as I explained uh, previously, Japan is behind from Europe in the development of uh, offshore renewable energy and. Uh, has limited infrastructure versus. Therefore, the purpose of this demonstration was to establish the technology for installation of heavy large turbines. I believe, I believe uh, the result is successful. Thank you, Mr. Miyagawa. I don't know if anyone from the speakers wants to add something in this question. Well, okay, if not, perhaps we can move into other question. Well, I have, uh, I have now one question particularly to address to uh, Miguel and Matias. Uh, it is it's a question from uh, uh, Professor Antonio Sarmiento. Uh, we have seen three presentations related to testing of ocean energy projects. The presentation by Mr. Miyagawa has shown performance data in comparison with the mathematical model simulation. However, the two uh, presentations, one from Core Power and one from EcoWave, did not. 
So it is not clear how the two technologies performed in real C conditions. Is it possible? The question is, is it possible to have access to such information? Or it's still confidential? Right now, it's still confidential, of course. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Professor Antonio also knows this, that one of the targets uh, that we have uh, right now is to extract that huge amount of data that comes from real world uh, deployment. And what I mean real world is grid connected, right? So I mean, the device will perform during this demonstration phase as it will uh, further down the line when it will be uh, commercialized. So the quantity of power, the quality of power is, will be measured. Of course, we can we estimate a capacity factor of 41% uh, right now that can evolve uh, as uh, control technology also evolves up to 62% in, uh, I would say, four or five generations into the future of the technology. So, yeah, the, the data that's coming out of this project will be a key factor to validate our technology and any other technology, uh, especially when we think about hybridizing it with uh, offshore wind. Thank you. Matthias, you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Antonio, for the question. So, well, actually, we have a public case study about our project of Gibraltar. So, I'm happy to share it. And there is also in our YouTube uh, video site, let's say, uh, a video of our CEO explaining it. So, I'm happy. Anyone can send me an email and I can share it uh, without any problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. Well, coming this and before the, I jump to the last question to Mr. Kobayashi. Um, Miguel, um, I have here another question. Is the grid connection uh, on the deployment site uh, or its installation was part of core power activities? This question is oh, from the, 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 the grid connection is there uh, because it was used on, on the earlier projects like Windfloat or even the Talanis or AWS. So the grid connection is there. The substation is connected to the grid. What we are doing right now is to install a new soldering cable for our devices and for any other technology developer that wants to use the site. So it's getting it ready for the next 20 years as a, a demonstration uh, site for wave energy technology or any other kind of marine energy technology. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. So last question to Mr. Kowashi is actually also uh, my question. <laughs> uh, uh, we we are talk we talk here a lot to, in this in this panel about the, the technologies, uh, but uh, we need also to understand that to bring this technology into reality, we need to have the new ports and infrastructures available. Uh, it's it's I think we all know that Japan is is a, is a huge potential in infrastructures. You have a huge experience in big shipyards, in big construction and scale. Uh, my question is. Uh, how uh, are Japanese, uh, are Japan preparing uh, to uh, adapt any ports or infrastructure uh, to attend this the next demand over the next decades for these marine renewable projects? Is there any plan ongoing? How do you see this uh, moving on in the future, Mr. Kawayashi? Um, I'd like to confirm your question. Um, are you asking the about the uh, port um, Portage infrastructure. Yes. Um, I think that should be a great program. Um, the government um, appointed the uh, four area, several areas for the um, arrangement of or improvement of the um, um, port port infrastructures, but um, the. The, 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 the development for offshore wind turbine is going on and the, probably the business of the such kind of um, renewable energy business such as the uh, wind turbines or, 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 or tidal turbines is going, going up and up. But the, 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 the forecast of the magnitude of such kind of um, business is at this moment um, not clear. So the Japanese government is um, could not decide the size, total amount of the uh, port, the, the the amount of the number of the ports 
are required. So that's the problem. So uh, probably I think the, the growth of the uh, amount of the uh, power generation on using the renewable energy um, going up and going up and going up, probably the uh, Japanese government decide um, the amount of the, 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 um, the arrangement of the um, such kind of port for uh, the preparation of the wind turbines or tidal turbines, I think, at this moment. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kobayashi. Uh, well, yeah. uh, I wish I had time to uh, share more questions. There is more questions uh, on our QA. Uh, I invite you all to uh, try to contact directly with our speakers. They will be for sure available to answer any questions. Uh, I should thank you again to all of you, Mr. Miyagawa, Mr. Kobayashi, uh, Mr. Seagal, and Mr. Silva. Uh, great presentations. I think was a very good panel. Uh, so thank you again, and Carolina, now it's time to move on. Ricardo, thank you all. So before the last uh, session, we would like to share uh, another video uh, from Principal Power um, that is uh, also a gold speaker, a gold sponsor. The world needs more renewable energy to achieve a low carbon future. Over the last two decades, offshore wind power has emerged as one of the most promising renewable technologies. However, growth has been limited to a few regional markets with shallow seas. More than 80% of the global offshore wind resources is in deep waters, so new solutions are required. Principal Power was founded to help unlock this potential. We have developed the WindFloat, a world-leading technology that allows offshore wind turbines to be deployed in any water depth. This technology allows wind farms to be sited responsibly, minimizing the impact to the environment and dramatically expanding access to the best available wind resources worldwide. Last year, we and our partners commissioned the 25 megawatt WindFloat Atlantic project in Portugal, Europe's first multi-unit floating array and the first project to obtain bank financing. We continue our work to make floating wind projects happen in every global maritime region as quickly and as competitively as possible. Our mission is to globalize floating offshore wind, which we believe will play a vital role in the global energy transition. It is clear, however, that the technology can only reach its full potential with a commitment from governments to create enabling conditions for the sector.